Doug Gottlieb show rolls on Fox Sports Radio. He is a uh, former Pro Bowler. Now he's a man you'll see on CNN, Headline News. You'll hear him on weekends, uh, usually Saturdays. Now moving as we get to football to Sundays on Fox Sports Radio. He's a screenwriter. He is a renaissance man. <laughs> um, he should have been my co-host. I, my co-host was still good. We should have had a three-person show on leadoff on uh, CBS Sports Network. Yeah, they wanted a, a female. Yes. So. Well, we we listen. We we were trying to figure out, trying to figure out, do we want you know a me and you you know ebony and ivory thing? <laughs> it was like six years ago. It was, right? but, but I will say that she's really good. She was good. She's really good. But they allowed me to work a lot with you guys. So yeah. that was that was great. Yeah, because because you were really really good. Um, you just had the wrong body type. I guess, <laughs> I guess would be. Eve from Salam joins us on the Doug Gottlieb show. Are you mad at me for my tweet? I was not mad at you. I was asked about it all the time. Just the other day on CNN, I was like, "Well, well, what do you make of this uh, sports reporter, uh, Doug Gottlieb, and his comments?" And you know, I I understand why you went there right. because when you look at the landscape, you're like, "Come on, this is the." In some people's opinion, it's the greatest sport on the planet. How can you possibly walk or walk away from that? And because re, you don't want to rehab, right? You, you're tired of being hurt and injured. But I look at it a different way. So football is, out of all of the professional sports, is probably the toughest to deal with mentally and physically. Okay. And... If you're not in it... Mentally in terms of which aspect to it? Well... Your, your body? The body... If you have to go out there and perform, right? Say with a lacerated kidney or a broken rib. Yeah. Mentally, what that does to you... Like, if you're at home... My wife used to look at me like I was crazy. I had broke my hands one year. <laughs> right? Started 14 games with uh, two shattered fingers and a shattered knuckle. And I was at home and couldn't do mundane. T- I couldn't pick up a fork or a drink, a, 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 a hold a glass in my hand. Right. And it, yet I was starting on Sundays. And that's, she what, was, that's what football players do. Exactly. And she, but she couldn't understand that. She was like, how is, what, what is this? What, what are we doing? And I said, well, I'm working. This is what I do. Right. I'm in it. I love this. It's my team. If you're not committed at that level, the mental anguish you go through dealing with injury after injury, rehab after rehab. Miss, he missed a whole year, right? And if you're not all in, you, you I would prefer you walk away like Andrew Luck did because it's not the game where you can just limp into and just, oh, I'm just going to collect the check because you're going to get yourself hurt or you're going to get somebody else hurt. Okay, there's a couple, couple different aspects to it, okay? The, the first is, and this is where like I get a little bit upset at former players, you know, the Bo Jacksons of the world. Like, you know, you can't like, look, dude, like Bo Jackson tr- actually tried to come back mm-hmm. after he blew up his hip. Right. Cause that's what football players do. Ronnie Lott cut off his finger so he could play in a playoff game. Right. Like football players have this ability to like F it. I'm just going to go out and play with broken hands. Who does that? And here's a guy who's like, nah, I'm good. And that goes counter to traditional football culture, which I kind of feel like is the new age guy, which some of it's smarter. Some of it, they're like, look, man, I've actually taken care of my money. I have another life. There's more to me, more to life than football. I'm good. But it is very much a, and people get all hot and bothered about the idea of millennial. Like it is a millennial idea. Like millennials do the things they like. They want to be, they want that affirmation immediately, right? They want to work as a group. They're willing to move or wherever they they ask for a raise. You know, two weeks into a new job, they they do. These <laughs> I are have, all I have nephews who yeah. are millennials, and that that is accurate. Okay, so and talking to guys that own businesses, and I I hire people as well. Like that's kind of what they do. But the other thing is they they search for joy within what they do, and sports generally isn't that way, right? Like the fun in football is winning. The work is not. Fun. If you can make practice fun, it's like my my son's on on me all the time. Like, Dad, your practices are kind of hard and they're not much fun. I'm like, hey, dude, you know what's really fun? When you're playing a game and you kick somebody's ass. And because of all the different things we did, right? 
you you they can't press you they 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 can't kick you out of your offense and you get shot after shot after shot and because of all the work you put in shooting you make all your shots like I, that's the fun and I, these guys are different I, I get it but when we're talking about Andrew Luck there's no funner position in the NFL than quarterback right and protected right so in in that aspect this man has sacrificed everything to play this game I mean. The injuries, the beating he took, God bless the NFL for the salaries being what they are now. Right. I'll tell you this, Douglas. Yes. I played from 1998 to 2010. If at any moment in those first seven years I had made $100 million dollars and I was on my fourth or fifth knee surgery by then. <laughs> you best believe. And I am not a millennial. I would have been sitting there like, you know what? We got the house in the Hamptons. We have the place out in Palm Springs. I, uh, I think I'm going to go do something else. Right? The fact that Andrew Luck has amassed that type of fortune because of his skills. His skill set yep. and his draft position, it allowed him to really think, okay, how much better do I want my life moving forward? Because I can tell you, as someone who did play with two broken hands, someone who did come back and start nine days after having knee surgery, it's it's a bunch of those guys out there. My right knee will never be the It'll never be the same, ever. My doctor told me, Hey, stop playing basketball. Stop doing it. Don't do squats, leg press, any of that. Because if I have to go back into your knee again, drain the fluid, clean it out, I'm going to have to replace your knee, and I'm trying to get you to at least 55 before I do that. That's what football does. No, look, I get it. I I do. I I do think that that. We, but we do this thing where we're like, okay, unless there's something way worse with his leg than we thought, like. Is it? Oh, it's definitely way worse. But what is it? They don't know. He doesn't know. Now think about he, this. He has to think. He has to think. He's gonna tear his Achilles tendon. Of course, that's what he thinks. But I, I honestly, I, I do think that this is a little bit of the social media generation where we see Kevin Durant, mm -hmm. and he's told, "You're good." Should have never did that. You're good. <laughs> By the way, I, I, I share with with my listeners. I have a very close friend who's a former athlete, surgeon in Orange County, and he's like, look, you want to know the truth? That thing was torn before he ever took the court. But by the way, there's nothing you could have done. It was going to tear, whether you played this year, sat next year, like you can rehab some, but if it's a significant enough tear, it's going to tear, and he was going to have to get it fixed eventually, if he wanted to play basketball again anyway. Mm -hmm. But I, I think that's what he thinks it is. I think he's he's convinced that if I go back out there, I'm going to tear my Achilles tendon. And does he want to go through and that? And that he doesn't want to go through. And that I would actually understand. But can you blame? So why would you attack him and, 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 and say that this is such a millennial decision? Because he doesn't have a torn Achilles tendon. Otherwise, they would have said, you have a torn Achilles tendon. Yeah, I, I wonder if Kevin Durant could just rewind the tape. Of course, he got paid and, and, and all of that. By the but, way, he's come out and said... He has no animus about it. Of, of course not. But it he still has to go through the rehab, right? Dude, look, I, if I, you lose, if you you're an athlete, you know. If you lose the faith in your training staff at the at, at that level, college, but when you get to the pros, it's supposed to be the best of the best. No, I understand, but you don't think that he's gone out and gotten a third third party, a fourth party, uh, other doctors to check it out? Of course, but those doctors don't live with him. He's married to that training staff. No matter what outside help you bring in, every day he's seeing these people who've misdiagnosed, who di oh, we just think can't get to the bottom of it. We don't know what. As a professional athlete, I don't want to hear that. I trust you with my body, right? If you tell me, Ephraim, you can go out there and play, then I'm going out there and play. Right. That's it. And if I go out there and re-injure myself, a la Kawhi Leonard, when you lose that trust, it's a wrap. For professional athletes, it's no going back. Do you think he comes back and plays? I think he has two years. I think within that two years, he makes a decision to come back and play. 
Does he I feel, do. He'll feel so much better. He'll feel better about it. He'll feel better. He he needs some time away. He's coming off injury after injury after injury. Paul's had a great year last year. Back to injury. I, you mentally, you can't. If you're not a lifer, a football lifer, right? You can't justify that mentally. Tom Brady is a lifer. Yeah. So Brett Favre, so, lifer. Correct. So right. So, th- so this this goes to a point which. People are, you think they didn't like the tweet, they're really not going to like this. I don't think Andrew Luck loves football. Well, how can you say that? I, I don't think. I didn't say I know. I said I don't think. Uh, can I take you through why? Okay. I think he's great at football. Great. I have been a defender of Andrew Luck. I think he's way better. Be like, oh, before last year, they're like, oh, so overrated. Like, no, when he's healthy, he's been awesome. Okay? But comes from a football family, brilliant guy, knows football like the back of his hand, studies it, knows it. But if you really, really, really loved it, you'd say, I need some time away, but I'm, I'm coming back. Just I got to get my body right. Well, that's not necessarily true. Because I love football, right? I love football. I was willing to do anything. But you when, got old. But, but, but listen, old. I get it. But when people ask They're me, will so you let old. your, when people ask me, will you, you let your sons knees. play? Yes. I say no. You're not going to let your son play? No. Are you kidding me? I let my son play tackle football. My dope. No, because you don't have the experience that I have. Right. What I know is how I wake up every morning. And when I look at my sons, I would never want to project that type of that level of pain on them. I won't I wouldn't want my sons to have to have the level of of pain tolerance that I have. It's not natural. Yeah. Okay? It's it's trust me, it's not natural. And so to to try to protect them as a father, would, as me as a father, I would. I don't want them to play football. I tell them I play football, so you wouldn't have to. You can do whatever you want. Now my sons, thank God, will be seven feet tall because my wife is tall, and we're just gonna grow out. We go. We, we go how, how tall? We, they? Uh, uh, how old right, are they? Right, seven. Well, eight and five now. And my eight year old wears size 12, 13 in clothes. And my five year old were size eight, nine in clothes. Damn. That's what that's what we're doing over here. Yeah. We do basketball clinics every day after after school at the Salam household. That's what we're that's what's going on over here. But I say that to say you can love football, but you can you can get to a point where football doesn't love you back. Yeah. And that's where you get that. But but didn't you say that by saying he's not a lifer? Isn't that isn't that isn't no? That you don't code? have to be a lifer to love football. Isn't that isn't that code for the same thing? No, it's not. You look at some of these coaches who are lifers, right? I had a coach, Alex Gibbs. He would sleep underneath the desk in the office. He just didn't want to go home, right? Talk to one of his kids. He's like, oh yeah. So what you doing out here in L.A. Right across the street at this gym? He was like, oh, I just had to get away from my dad, right? Like it's just. Certain connotations come with being a lifer. You sacrificed the majority of everything in your life to be a lifer. At fo- Ask Giselle. If you watched a little bit of Tom versus Time, you saw inklings of her saying like, eventually we want to do stuff together as a family, but this football thing, right? Like, no question. So but when you isn't isn't that that's a that's a true love for football? No, that's you an can, unhealthy love for football. I, I mean, I, I actually think we're saying the same thing. We just may be wording it. We, well, our, when our you say I don't think Andrew Luck loves football, like, I'm loves not saying that. Football. I'm not saying that. I think you are. You can that. no shot. You I can think, love football, but you can get to a point in your life where you want to move on from football. Has not, you don't move on from something you love. So you're if married, you love right? It, yes. Have you ever been divorced? No, not yet. Right? So don't say not yet. It's not going to happen. So I'm married, never been divorced. Not getting divorced. It's not happening. We took it off the table. You ask some of your colleagues, you're like, yeah, man, we've been divorced two, three times, right? Well, you go into it loving it, right? Yeah. You love your wife. It's going to happen, and boom, boom, boom. All of a sudden, three, four, five, 10, 12, 20 years down the road, you get a divorce. What does that mean? That you're you don't love being married or being in love? Yes. No, you get to a point where it's time to move on. No matter how much you love something or someone, you get to a point where it's time to move on. And I think Andrew Luck, sooner than people expected or wanted him to, got to the point where it was like, look, I'm not having a good time. It's more painful for me to do this than not to do it, right? 
I can't give what I need to it because I love the sport that much. I respect and love it to that level. If I can't put that into it, then I have to walk away. How can you be mad at that guy? I, I say I, I, there's there's the, the most important thing is there's no anger at it. Like I actually well, there's a bit of sarcasm, sarcasm. and a bit of it. Uh, sarcasm is not know, anger. I mean, but sarcasm is not anger. Uh, uh, yeah, but sarcasm when you tweet, is, sir- right? There's no inflection in tweeting. Right, so when you text but, but someone, you, you, or also, infl- you also knew me. You knew me. I know, I, and so you, you like there. And did you ever think like, oh, he, he mad? No, of course right. I know you. So why are you, that- why are you saying like you, you're mad? Like I'm not mad. Like I don't care. <laughs> I really don't care. <laughs> I just, I just think this, this is kind of, a, this is kind of a new thing to where guys are like, yo, I got enough money, I don't need it, and it goes counter to what football guys, r- football guys have always told me, which is like, there's a football game, I'm playing. You know what else that football guys don't have that is a a big cog in this wheel? They don't have lifetime health care. Yeah. Okay? So you can run through all the walls you want to. You can play with two broken hands like Ephraim did. You can play with nine days after surgery. Guess what happened to me in February, two, two years ago? I got a letter. From the NFL saying, hey, thank you, uh, but your health care is now expired. Good luck. And they roll you out to the wa- – like you have to take and, – and we have the information so you get, so now. You, now you get the SAG after stuff. <laughs> like I'm in the writer's kill, yeah. right? Great insurance. But I was paying – I took my NFL insurance that I had, went to an insurance adjuster or whoever, and was like, give me comparable insurance. And they were like, oh, okay, well – clicks on the computer had all of that had all of that and then it was like oh hmm okay well to get this coverage it's going to be 58.93 a month for you and your two children I, and, and my wife I said oh well I don't I don't want that I, I, I don't want that I gotta pay almost six thousand dollars a month for this insurance well you know your history and then if you look and see it right yeah all of that right so now we have that information nobody was talking about health care when we were playing nobody we didn't care but the further you get away from the game the more the game attacks you and your way of living if you can make a hundred million dollars in seven years walk away from a game you love and a sport you love and live your life with less health complications Brother, I'm standing on the table and applauding that. There'll be another Andrew Luck. We'll get another Andrew Luck. It's fine. Let this man live his life. He put it all out there on the line for Indianapolis. He he did everything he could and some. It's time for him to go, walk away. Hopefully, we get to see him again. Like you said, I think in two years after everything comes down, he adjusts, he comes back. But that's until when, that's then, when you find out if you really love something, right? There you go. Right? E from E from Salam, check him out uh, when you start this Sunday or next next Sunday. So, so I'm on Saturday. I'm on five to eight this Saturday. That, uh, is that East or West West Coast? That's uh, Pati- uh, West Coast. So Pacific eight to State. eight to eleven. Eight to eleven. Uh huh. And then uh, in two weeks I'll be on Sundays two to five here five to eight. Best team. Yeah. No one's talking about in the NFL. You know what? I think um, <laughs> it pains me to say this because I've never understood why. But a team no one ever talks about, in a good way anyway, is the Tennessee Titans. Period. No, we don't even watch the Tennessee Titans. They, I've they been never, on record they, saying. Th- I mean, they are the most thankful that Andrew Luck retired. Th- 0-12. 0-12 lifetime <laughs> against Andrew Luck. And one little thing like that, one domino falls in your favor. Right, they've been nine and seven forever. Yes, they just right around that nine. They've sque- squeaked into the playoffs at nine and seven. That's two games. Think about that. That's two games for the Tennessee Titans that they now can can roll into taking that next step. And problem is they don't know who their quarterback is <laughs> at, at this point in time. He's E from Salam. Check him out this Saturday, eight to eleven Eastern time, five to eight Pacific time. And of course, then it'll start on Sundays when football officially kicks off the National Football League. E great stuff. Hi, I'm Doug Godley from uh Fox Sports Radio and you need to subscribe to the Fox Sports Radio YouTube channel where you can hear and see me. Why not? Plus everybody else who's awesome. Here in Fox Portrayal.